Okay, well, we have the lovely Sharon who's going to minister to us now in music to bless us with an anointing that will cause comfort to our hearts and cause fear to be diminished as we look towards the future and the present hope of his coming. So I'm going to change the view. If we'd all mute, it would be great. I'm going to sing Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the Christ you Thank 
Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you. It was a blessing. Praise God for God's goodness and his mercy. Well, welcome, everybody, to uh, Victory Live Church on Zoom. I say alive because we used to be known years ago as London's Alive Church, and even that offended people. <laughs> I found out in life, no matter what you do, you're going to offend somebody. But you got to... Um, be at a place where you're not offending God. You know, you're going to offend men. And have, have, do you have faith? Then have it to yourself before God, not before men, before God. It's always before God. So if you're going to walk with God, you're going to please God uh, because you're living by faith, and it's all by faith. Then uh, you can have a experience maybe like Enoch. Enoch walked with God and was not. You could have a was not moment. And God took him, took him to a better place. I think this was not is an important point. <laughs> was not anything of yourself anymore. In other words, all that you do, all that you say, all that you are is to do with himself. You in him and him in you, in your union experience with the Lord. And so it's no longer your desires, it's his desires in you. It's no longer anything but you presenting your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God with your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world's way of teaching or learning, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you might prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. God is wanting us as part of his body to prove his will to be good, acceptable, and perfect. And so we're all ambassadors in the sense of the Lord Jesus and the new covenant. And uh, I know categorically God spoke to me, I heard it. He said, I am an ambassador, an ambassador, that, that's, that's my gift. An ambassador, I believe, of the new covenant because it's in the new covenant where there is faith. Old covenant is based on fear. You know, years ago, when the old covenant was being formed, as it were, they came to Mount Sinai. They've been, they've been delivered from Egypt. That's the Passover. And now they're moving in the wilderness by God's direction. Uh, towards the promised land. And I thought about that even the other day where it says their, their shoes didn't even wear out. Well, their shoes didn't wear out, most of their clothes didn't get old and worn either. And plus they took all the spoils from Egypt. They left with all bags of gold earrings. and all, They left with a lot of money. In fact, they plundered Egypt. Egypt just wanted to get rid of them. Well, Egypt is, uh, is a type of the world. And I believe that the world will want to get rid of us soon too. And they're going to give us their gold and their money and their lots. Because for the uninformed, and I'm not saying you are, but there's many 
who are uninformed as to really what's going on. It's not really about COVID or vaccines. It's about a global reset that the elite, the small percent, one percent of these big corporate demagogues, whatever you want to call them, billionaires, wanting to rule and reign over the world, one world government. And so there's a, a reset coming. And this is why you have this COVID being weaponized the way it is. It's to cause people to be so fearful that they'll do anything that these powers tell them to be safe. Are we back? Looks like it. Okay, we're back. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened there. It seems like a, a connection on the internet, looks like. Okay, so where where did I end? Can someone open up their mic and tell me? What, what is the last thing you heard? It's about the demagogues, about the reset. Okay, about the reset. Okay. Yeah. So we want to be informed as to what's really going on. And it's, um, it's a one world government conspiracy to put the world basically under the control of a handful of people. Uh, and um, of course you see it in China, it's called communism. And um, God's, this is not God's plan for his people. It's not his plan at all. So what they're doing, I believe will fail. I believe they were found. So this great reset that they're talking about, when they all come together, these heads of nations and these corporate billionaires, that's what they have in mind, is to put you and I in bondage, in slavery, to the system, to the system. But it won't work. I believe, personally, that this is going to be a moment in time when God's going to overturn this conspiracy. He's going to turn the tables. I'm sure you know the scripture, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And so this wealth that they're making and they're rich billionaires, I mean, this is, I believe God's going to switch it around. I really do believe that. And I believe that we're in this timetable now where this could happen. You know, sometimes you just got to wait for the season to arrive before you can get the benefit or before you receive the displeasure of God. It's all in, in cycles. It's all cyclical. There's so many years and then suddenly you're in a thing called curse time. Then after that, you're in a, a time of blessings. It goes in cycles. So I believe the cycle we're in now is, 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 is very much pro seeing the overcomers ruling and reigning in life through Christ Jesus. And if you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're born again, you've experienced the Passover, you, you are an overcomer. But you have to continue to live by faith. You have to continue to have a mind that's the same as the mind of Christ. You have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind so you can walk with God. And uh, you'll be pleasing to God. Now, the old covenant cannot save you, can't save anybody. Uh, the Judaizers that used to follow Jesus, I mean, uh, yeah, Jesus, wherever he went, no, Paul, sorry, Paul, wherever he went, always trying to tell people that he was telling them a lie that it wasn't true what he was saying so he they caught him a, caused him a lot of problems the judaizers wanted the people to know jesus the judaizers knew jesus they they were okay when it came to the passover they recognized that the blood of the lamb was the blood of jesus christ but they didn't want it to go further than that they you know there's a certain amount of freedom you can have 
free from sin, but you can't be really, really free from the temple or from the system, the religious system. I don't, no, no, you can't do that. In other words, you can be saved by grace through faith and not of yourself, it is the gift of God. But when it comes to sanctification, you need to do something about that. You've got to keep the law. You've got to keep the law. Now, when I say keep the law, uh, I say it with tongue in cheek, because really the truth is you can't keep the law. You never could. The law was added because of sin. Sin is broken law. It was the Sid Anam sin that came into the whole world. And everyone that's born into this world is born with the sin virus coming from Adam, the first Adam. So even if you kept all the law, you're still a sinner. You're still a sinner because you haven't been born again. Okay, so the born again, find the Judaizers. But sanctification, that means you've got to do something and you've got to keep these laws. Well, again, because the understanding is maybe there regarding one part of the word, but the other part, they don't have the understanding. And I find that the big problem in Christianity is, is to do with the law. We don't understand it. The law leads us to Christ. The law cannot save you. The law is perfect. It's holy. It's spiritual evil. It's the very character of the Father God, but you can't keep it. Why? Because you can't. No one can, except one. His name was the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one born into this earth who kept the law perfectly. That was the spotless lamb, the lamb of God crucified before the foundation of the world. He came on a mission. He said, I'm coming, you might have life and have it more abundantly. But for you and I to have life, there has to be a death. And he was the one that was going to die for the sins of the whole world, not just Israel, everybody. And so the law, it's perfect. It's so perfect that you can't keep it. Well, you can try to keep it. The Judaizers would tell you, you've got to keep it if you're going to be sanctified. But the Bible says, if you keep all the law, but one part, you don't, then you're guilty of all the law. You've got to start all over again. So you keep trying, you keep trying. But the good news is, folks, that Jeremiah 31, 31, it was stated that God was going to bring in a new covenant. And this new covenant, he was going to write the law across our hearts and put it in our mind. So you see, the, the law is, is, is not an enemy. It's there for a purpose to lead us to Christ. It's not wrong or bad. The law isn't bad. In fact, he said, I'm going to put it in your heart. So now it's not an outer law, which we try to keep. But it's an inner law that God keeps giving us understanding during our lifetime. And this inner laws of God, the Ten Commandments, convict us when we miss it, miss the mark or sin. The law within us, it, it convicts us. And we uh, then know that we can confess our faults one to another and we shall be healed. Confess our faults to the Lord, it's called repentance. Have a change of mind about the way we're living. And, and uh, as a prodigal, you step out the pig pen and God's waiting for you. The father's waiting for you. I'm a daddy with a robe and a ring. This is the good news. Now, what the Judaizers were endeavoring to bring out was a distorted gospel. It wasn't the good news at all. The old covenant really isn't very much good news at all. It's all about fear. And uh, on the day of Pentecost, the first Pentecost, when God came down, on that mountain called Sinai, fear was rampant. They, they, they heard thunders and lightnings and smoke and uh, things were breaking up. I mean, it, it, it was too fearful. But God said to Moses, I've come to test the people. I've come to test them. 
And, and if they will hear, if they come close and hear what I have to say, that will be a way of them to not sin because they'd be so fearful. It's called the fear of God. But you have to hear what God is saying. So you can look from a distance, but you don't hear what God is saying. So faith doesn't rise. See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God was speaking on that mountain, but he came down and the people said, no way, we're going to go up there. You go up, Moses, and you tell us what God said. But you see, that's, that's like getting it secondhand. When he comes down, he tells you what God said. You don't want to get it secondhand. You want to get it firsthand from God. You want to hear from God yourself. So sometimes you've got to step forward in faith and hear the thunder and the lightnings and the smoke and say, well, I'm, I'm still going ahead because God is a good God and God loves me. And I'm going to hear what he has to say. And when I'm speaking, so I got to undo. We're having an internet problem, it looks like. Although I have very good broadband from Virgin. <laughs> but it's breaking down. Anyway, did you hear what I said? And how far do we go this time? Can someone tell me where I was? Unmute yourself and tell me. Hearing the message second hand. Okay, okay. Well, that, that means you got quite a bit of it. Thank you, Helen. So you want to get a direct word from the Lord. You get a direct from the, uh, if it comes directly to you, you will have faith. Faith will rise. Faith will rise to do whatever he told you to do. So the law now is in us. So it's good. But when it's outward law, you can't keep it, no matter how hard you try. And... Um, this is something that people don't really get. They think that they can keep the law and they, they try to keep all the laws of, of the Ten Commandments. But if you miss one, remember, if you miss just one, you, you miss them all. So you come under the curse anyway. It's called broken law. Uh, and to top it all, not only is there the Ten Commandments, then you've got um, the Judaizers bringing all the laws of the temple and the traditions of men. It's called the Talmud. So you've got the Torah, the five books of the uh, Old Testament, five books of Moses, the first five books. Then you've got, then you get the traditions of men. You've got to keep all these. This is what the Judaizers were saying to the people that God, that Paul was ministering to, uh, the, the gospel. The, the gospel, you say by grace to faith, yourself, it's a gift of God. You can't add to it or subtract from it. It is. You just got to believe it. You've got to believe it. And that the God in you, who's written his laws in you, will keep you. It's called the keeping power of God. And he'll keep you through the storms and the trials. Uh, you're going to go through trials and storms in this life, but he'll keep you. And I've experienced the keeping power of God many times. I'm sure you have. It's a reality. It's real. God keeps us, keeps us safe. But in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He said, but I've overcome the world. So if you cease from your works and you just take on board what Jesus said and believe it, you become an overcomer. And you can be happy. You're not trying, you're trusting. Big difference between trying and trusting. People say, I'm just trying to be a good Christian. You're wasting your time. You'll never be a good Christian in that sense. Even Jesus, when uh, one, one sincere person said to him, what do I have to do, Lord, to be totally, you know, sanctified? And he called him good master, good teacher. And, he, and Jesus said, don't call me good. Jesus said that, don't call me good. My father, which is in heaven, he only is good. See, because Jesus was like us. He came to the earth born of a virgin, didn't have an earthly father. That's why he was able to fulfill the laws of God. He was perfect in every way. He didn't come in with the sin nature of Adam, the first Adam. He 
because he is born of the Father from above by the power of the Holy Spirit through a virgin Mary. So this law, Old Covenant, confuses people. But the Old Covenant should really pass away in your thinking to be replaced by the New Covenant. You shouldn't be involved in old covenant practices. Let no man judge you regarding meat or drink or holy days or Sabbaths. No man judge you. You have faith, have it to yourself before God. Happy is the man or woman that approves the things that they want to do. You approve it before God. No man judge you. So the Judaizers was Paul's problem, but the Judaizers are around today causing problems within the church body. That sanctification must also come now by the old covenant laws. You see, they want to keep the old covenant going, so they brought in sanctification. Now you've got the, okay, you can be saved by grace through faith. It's the gift of God, but sanctification, you, you've got to keep these laws. Uh, these temple laws, food laws, and God forbid, don't get involved with the Talmud, you will be muddied. You, can't, you don't want to keep those laws. So here we are, being called lawless, and yet we know that God has written the law on our hearts and put them in our mind. So why are we lawless? We're not lawless. We're new covenant believers. We believe what God has said. We are children of Abraham, and Abraham is a type of the father of faith. He's a type of the new covenant. You know, I've always said, have always, will say that first the natural, then the spiritual. But when it comes to the covenants, the first covenant, the new covenant, came by Abraham first. Then came the old covenant. And Abraham's covenant is a new covenant it's blessing. And it was God alone who ratified that covenant. He put Abraham to sleep. Of course, you have to have an animal sacrifice, which is, represents the type of Christ, the Lamb of God. And so God himself set this one up. It was a sacrifice, an animal sacrifice, cut up. And God walked between the two parts of the animal. That's what the blood covenant is all about. So when he walked between the parts of this bloodied animal, he ratified the covenant. But he put Abraham to sleep. Abraham was sleeping. So in other words, it's telling us that God's going to keep the covenant. You're not going to keep what God is. The covenant that includes you and me is the new covenant. If you be in Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the blessings. You're heirs. I'm an heir. So then comes the old covenant. But the old covenant was temporary. It's only a temporary thing. Once Jesus Christ died on Calvary as the Lamb of God, there's no more sacrifices for sin. Sin has been dealt with on the cross of Calvary. And you're free. I'm free. Uh, in fact, you're so free, you decide that you'll be a bond servant, and you'll be a servant to God's house because you're so free. Because you, it's so wonderful being in the presence of God. You don't want to be free to do your own thing anymore. That was very exciting before, but now you just want to be a bond servant. And in the old, the old times, you know, when there was slavery. The slavery uh, that God promoted or even told was to be part of the traditions really, of being an Israelite. But it wasn't like the slaves that we see today. After seven years, you were set free. You walk away. You were a slave because you couldn't pay your debt sin. You couldn't pay your debt. You didn't have money, so you were put into slavery, but only for seven years. Then after a while, you find out you're a slave under the laws of God, 
that actually your, your life was not bad at all. It came so good. Your family was prospering. You, you were fed. You had no worries, no money worries. So you told the master, uh, listen, I actually uh, thank you for setting me free, but I would actually like to stay in your house. I'm happy in your house. You're kind to me. I've got everything I need. And if that's your choice. You're free now by the, the laws of, of, of Israel. You would be free after seven years. You paid your debt, but you say, no, I want to stay. So the master takes you to the doorpost of the house and with a hammer and a nail pierces your ear and puts a earring in there. <laughs> and, uh, and you are now in the house of your master forever. No cares. You don't have to worry about the rent. You don't worry about the food. Your family is taken care of and you become a son in the father's house. Except you as just one of his family members. And that's why Paul called himself a bond servant of the Lord. He became a bond servant. You got free will and you can free to go your own way. But no, I'd rather I'd rather stay in God's house. I think I've made that choice. I'm sure you have too. If you haven't, do it. You know, the will of man is free. Uh, that's one of the pillars of all truth. And God is love. That's another pillar. But you can be so free. But you missed the point. Do you really want to be free to do the things you want to do? You are, you can do it. But it's better to do the things that he wants to do through you. That's where you come to that place where you're a, you're a son in the father's house. This gospel that Paul preached was such good news that People had a hard time with it. Even Paul said, I, my gospel, I preached all over the world. Everyone's heard it. But then he sorrowfully said later on, but all have rejected it and rejected me. The only one that stayed with me, he said, was Luke. <laughs> so here's Paul the apostle bringing the good news, sharing the things of God. And even he had to say, all have left me. All have left. Because the human nature seems to always want to do things for God. This seems to be what they think is God wanting. I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to do that for God. And God said, I actually don't want you to do the, those things because when you do them, you mess up the plans anyway. Just be still. Let it, I am God. The battle's not yours, it's mine. And so he gave a promise in the new covenant. This promise is only for the new covenant. It's not for the old covenant. He said, a promise I leave you of entering into the rest. And some must enter. It's a promise. The promise rests. You cease from your own works. He says, strive to enter in. If you're going to do any striving as a Christian, strive to enter into the rest. It's a promise. The old covenant does not have that promise. The old covenant, you can't fulfill it. You can't save you. It condemns you. It's a condemning covenant. It was meant to lead you to the Christ reality that he is the savior of humankind, the whole world. An illustration I thought about to give you today was in Florence, in Italy, because these Italians had wonderful gifts of God for art and for paintings. I mean, these artists were all Italian. They were fantastic. Italy is an amazing place. A friend of mine once told me that um, Italy should be the richest nation in the world. The one thing it isn't that's made it not one of the richest country is the mafia. The mafia. It wasn't for the mafia. The Italians have such incredible gifts and talents from God as regarding art and color and fashion. Very rich country, but the mafia, unfortunately, leaks away the blessings. Anyway, that was something my friend said who dealt with a lot of Italians as far as the art. Well, anyway, there was a guy called Michelangelo. Well, my dad used to call him Michelini and <laughs> Michelini Anthony Bassetti, because my name is Michael Anthony Bassett. He said, Hey, Michelini, come here, Michelini. Well, Michelini, Michelangelo. 
was an artist. I'm sure you've heard his name, but I think he's one of the best artists the planet's ever seen or experienced. And um, he was the one who carved out of marble the statue of David, which was probably is the greatest piece of art in the whole world. So I thought about that. There was a slab of marble in, in, in uh, Florence by the, the chapel. It was sitting there for 25 years, this piece of marble. It, it was to commission this David statue. But the two artists that were commissioned looked at the marble and said, I don't think it'll work. It's, it's imperfect. It's not perfect for us. We, we need it. We're not going to use this marble. So it sat there for 25 years, apparently. And then, of course, after a while, the commission to uh, carve the statue of David to be put on the top of this chapel was given to Michelangelo. And uh, it was in the year 1501, I think, to 1504 AD. And so he chipped away on it, on this piece of marble. Took him three years, I believe, something like that, two, three years. It stood, I think, 14 feet high, if I can remember. But it's the most perfect statue of a man called David, a naked man called David. But it was something else. I'm sure you've seen it. But it was so heavy in the end, they said, we can't put it on the, on the top of the, the church. It'll, it's too heavy. So they said, we're going to put it in the in, in front of the, the door of the church in, in the square. I've forgotten the name of the square. And they had to remove another art piece that some other great artist sculpture made. I don't think he was too happy. Maybe he wasn't around. But they removed that one and put David there. Statue of David. So now, let's think about it this way. You're a student of art, and you are now in this academy, this art academy, and you're told to do what Michelangelo did. You've got to get a piece of marble and you've got to make a, a, another statue like David's and it's got to be as perfect as Michelangelo's, which is impossible. You can't do it. No one can do it. So what's the problem? Is the problem the artist? No, the problem is the academy, the art academy that you're a part of, because that art academy is asking you to do something that's impossible. No one could replicate what Michelangelo did. So you're in the wrong college of academy, you're in the wrong academy. So I would suggest that you change your academy, your artistic academy, go to another one that only says to you, now, if you want to pass, you want to get good grades, you've got to not do what Michelangelo did, but what you've got to do is just appreciate what Michelangelo did. And in that appreciation and those eyes of yours seeing it through faith, what he did was incredible. You will pass the test. And this is what it is today with us. We're in the wrong school. You're in the old covenant. You live in time of the old covenant. So what's the answer? Change. Change the academy from old to new covenant. And when you become a new covenant person and you don't introduce old covenant ways into your life, you'll be happy because you're keeping the law. Happy is a man that keeps the law. Happy is a woman that keeps the law. We're happy because we keep it by faith. And in fact, we're not really keeping it. God's keeping it for us. And so that's the difference. It's a big difference. So if you want to get involved with messianic type teachings, it's just putting you back under the law. You know, saying now you've got to uh, not eat this or, or you can't do that because that's, that's what they, they were told not to do in the, in, the, in, the, in the old covenant under Moses. You're not under Moses. Jesus Christ. Truth came by Jesus Christ. Law came by Moses. You're not supposed to do those things. There's certain things you're not supposed to do. 
You can appreciate them, but you, but you don't do them. And, and Christians, I see, get caught up trying to do things. They try to do things like eat certain Jewish foods and, 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 and do Jewish type holidays. And it's just gonna confuse you. I walk away from all that stuff. I just wanna appreciate what Jesus did. Faith in what he did. He said, it's finished. Done and dusted. Sets me free. I'm staying that way. But then you get told you got to wear, uh, you got to wear a, a scarf, or you got to wear a hat, or you got to put something on your head. All these things are Jewish customs, not for you and me. Don't keep these Jewish customs. You know, don't eat certain foods because you know and you can't eat those because they didn't eat those in, in the time of of the temple, the time of the uh, of when. Paul was around, they, you know, well, you might as well get circumcised then if you're a man, if you're not certain. But you, you don't do that. You don't need all that. In fact, you are really free. You're so free, you decide that you want to be in the house of your master and just do what he tells you to do because you're blessed. Blessed being in his house. So my freedom, I curtail. Yeah, I'm free. I can all things like nothing I can't do. But does it benefit me? Is it good for me? Does it build my Christ like character? If you're going to judge anything, look at the fruits of a system. Look at the fruits of a man or a woman. You shall know them by their fruits. You're not going to know them by their law keeping, you're not going to know them by anything but their fruit. And if the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, you know you're on track. It's telling me my internet connection is unstable. Well, thank you very much for telling me that. <laughs> Hopefully I'll come back. Um, but you can hear me, correct? You can hear me, just can't see me. Yes. Is, that, is that the deal? Anyway, it is recording, and we're still live on Facebook, but they're not seeing it either now, so nothing I can do about this. You know, I said to Denise this morning, I said, you know, Denise, it seems like Sunday morning, everything seems to challenge me regarding the camera, the lights. Now, I've never had problems with the Wi-Fi, <laughs> never. You know, Sunday morning we're having problems. So this might be a little um, pause on the message to ask you to pray for me Sunday morning. Could you pray that Sunday morning it goes flawless? We don't have all these interruptions. Because I know the enemy doesn't want you to hear freedom and liberty in the new covenant and being a believer that is overcome by ceasing from your own works. The enemy doesn't want you to have that happiness. But God does, and I do, and I'm sure you do too. Anyway, I think the camera's off, so I don't know what I can do with it. Uh, I think we had this last time, didn't we? Have you, okay, so that's on there. I'm gonna... <coughs> Turn the camera on. Let's see if it comes on. <laughs> well, Pauline is on. Oh, I'm on. Okay, there you go. Now, let me just do this. Let's come back. Okay, so it's back. I have to keep telling you, where did I stop? <laughs> uh, um, so anyway, you're a new covenant believer. Stay new covenant. Don't get involved with the old covenant. That's what the Judaizers were telling the Galatians. You've got to keep certain aspects of the law, old covenant, to be sanctified. They wanted to bring that old covenant back. And Paul saying, you don't need it. You don't need it. Stick with the old covenant. Stick with, stick with the new. 
Remember, if the law, I'm not saying the law is evil. If it was evil, God wouldn't write it on your heart, would it? And put it in your mind. The problem is the old covenant. It's just like the problem with these students that I mentioned who were going to art college to be like Michelangelo. The problem wasn't anything but the academy they were a part of, telling them to do what they couldn't do. And the Judaizers are telling the people to do what they couldn't do. And they couldn't keep the law themselves. That's why Jesus always would call them hypocrites. He said, you guys are hypocrites. He said, you would cross an ocean to convert somebody to your religion, but you can't keep it yourself because no one can. No one can. <laughs> no one can. The law cannot be kept by anybody except one, and it only took one, and that was Jesus Christ, because he was born of a virgin without sin. See, what the, um, the Judaizers at that time, in the days of Paul, what they didn't realize is that none of them were keeping the law anyway, even if they thought they were, because they were all born into sin in this earth. Everyone that came into this earth it was born of Adam. And those that are in Adam shall die because of Adam's sin. So they were all sinners anyway. So they couldn't be even sanctified by their own law. So can you see what God did? God added the law because of Adam's sin to make sin sinful because people were thinking they were, they were okay. They weren't okay. And God wanted to know they weren't okay. You've got a sin problem. And so the law ultimately should lead people to know Christ because the law convicts you. You're a sinner. The first time I heard the gospel, the preacher said, if you're a sinner, and I, I said, well, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I mean, God, I have no problem with hearing the good news. But some people don't think they're sinners. They think because they're good people. They've been, you know, they do all the good things. But unless you've actually been born again, you're still a sinner. You've got the sin nature, it's the Adamic nature. The Adamic nature can be actually nice and polite and kind and sophisticated, and you can do all the good works, and you can be part of all these type of uh, NGOs and doing good works out the earth. It's not going to save you. No. Salvation comes by believing in one who died on your behalf, called Jesus Christ. You say by grace through faith, not of yourself, it's a gift of God. It truly is a gift. And all you've got to do is receive it. You've got to receive this gift by faith. And then you experience a born again moment. The, the old covenant cannot bring you the Holy Spirit. This is the point. Can't bring you the Spirit of God, which is the promise of God. The promise of the Father is that he will give you and I the Holy Spirit. But you can't have the Holy Spirit through the old covenant. It's impossible. So the second Pentecost came, Acts 2. Again, we hear roaring and sounds and uh, scary things as the Holy Spirit turned up. Yes, that's the promise of the Father. Because Jesus, I'm going to pray the Father, he send you the Spirit. And then suddenly we see uh, the believers speaking in tongues. And these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall speak with other tongues. They shall cast out serpents. They drink any deadly poison or not harm. If you have a deadly vaccine, it won't harm you either. Because you know who you are in Christ. And, and uh, Paul proved the gospel to be true. He was bitten by a snake on the Isle of Malta. They were all waiting for him to die, all the people, all the locals. But he took that snake off and threw it away, and he was still alive. Now they want to worship him as a god. These signs shall follow you and me. These signs, uh, we should lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And we have our brother Ash. I believe Ash is going to take the meeting next week. He has a wonderful healing ministry, great testimonies. So I believe if you have a, a need next week, tell somebody and come expecting a heal, a miracle. Brother Ash ministers to you. I won't be around next week. I've got to be at another church. 
to do some other type of ministry. But anyway, I want to leave you comforted. I want to leave you with a sense of knowing the truth that sets you free. Paul was ministering to the Galatians. You can read in the book of Galatians all these type of questions. And uh, they were confused, the, the Galatians. Well, who's telling the truth? Is it Paul or is it the Judaizers? The temple people, they're Jews. They know the law. Maybe we should go back under their teaching. You don't go backwards, you go forward. You press on. Let us go on to perfection, Paul said, and this we will do if God permit. See, God might not permit those people there to go on because they'll go back. They're doubtful. So you think, well, I better not let them go on to perfection because if they hit perfection, which is the Christ in them as their life, and then they suddenly change their mind and say, I want to go back under the law, there's no hope for you. Christ is not going to die again. He died once. So that's why God won't permit a lot of people to go unto perfection. But you're here with me today and you're listening to this message, so it seems like God has permitted you like he permitted me to go on to perfection. Not the statue of David, who David is a type of Christ, but the reality of the Christ now living his life in you, which is the hope of glory. Glory. So anyway, there's a global reset, I said at the beginning. The, 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 uh, the, the Judaizers of our day want to be involved, want us to get involved in what they're doing to bring us into bondage. But I believe God's going to turn it all right. He's going to turn the tables on them. They think they're going to use this plague to put fear in everybody. No, we're going to move out of fear into faith. Into faith. And the reset is God's reset, not man's reset. I see God's reset because this is the time that this can take place. See, the promise of the Holy Spirit to be given to men and women could only take place when the new covenant came about. And so when Jesus died, he said, it's finished. This old covenant system's finished. This temple thing's finished. And it was the beginning of the new covenant. New covenant. Your new covenant people stay that way. Don't get involved in these people that want you to take on Jewish practices. It's wrong. It's not for you and me. You get caught up in that. You, you, I mean, I don't know. It's very hard to get back in faith because God, like I said, is only going to crucify his son once. So stay in faith. Press through. Bring down all the stand, stand. Remember, the battle's not yours, it's the law. You praise God and you'll see the walls coming down in your life that need to come down. Remember, from the top, from heaven, the curtains that divided Jew from Gentile were split open, signifying all can come now. All can come and receive blessing, the blessings of Abraham. It's, it's no longer separation. There's no longer the Jews or the chosen one. The Israel is now of anyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. You are the Israel of God. So now don't take that scripture. Uh, if, if you see it only for Israel or Judah or the Jews, you're missing the point. Where it said, if, if, if you curse them, God will curse you. If you bless them, God will bless you. But that's for us now. It's for everybody, Jew and Gentile, who are now believers. We are the Israel of God. We're God's chosen. And so if someone's coming against us, God will come against them because we are the Israel of God. But not in name only. It's real. This is real, real reality. There's no longer a wall of petition between the Jew and the Gentile. We're all now in the same body, the one body, one faith, one baptism, one hope of our calling. One, one, one. We are the Israel of God, and God's coming for the nations. The blessing of Abraham is 
to all the nations who would believe on Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's to everybody. So don't take that one scripture and apply it only to Israel in the Middle East. It's every nation now. Every nation is being shaken. God wants every nation to be blessed. And so that's why he's going to send people like you and me to the world. So you better get your passport ready. The big reset is here, but this is God's reset, not man's. Man think that they're, they're doing this. They're causing financial problems. The whole thing's going to collapse so they can reset it again. So they can be even richer than what they are. But God's going to turn it. This is our time. The power has been given to the overcomers now. Their lease is up. That's why they can't do the things they used to do. That's why they're raging. The nations are raging. These elite are raging. These central banks are falling apart. They're being kicked out of many countries now. Because people want the truth. And they want to be free. They want to stay in the Father's house. Anyway, Great Reset, I believe, is I'm ready for it. I'm ready to be blessed in a greater way than ever before. All things are possible, only believe. So this whole vaccine thing is not, that's not the agenda. It's to keep you in fear. That's the agenda. Keep you in fear. Bankrupt the systems and get everyone dependent on the 1% who will hand out little, little gifts. Just keep you alive, but you'll be a slave. But I believe that God's liberty and freedom at the moment is about to explode in the earth. This is tabernacles. This is not Pentecost. This is not Passover. We're in tabernacles. That means we're in line for a blessing. That means everyone that's going to try to curse us will be cursed by God because we are the Israel of God. We're the nations who are asking God to be king. There's only one king. There's only one ruler. And that's Jesus Christ. Every empire can only go so far and God stops it. Right now, America seems like it's being stopped. It could not be... The, China, watch China. It's great. China wants to take over, wants to take over the world. God forbid. You get under the rule of communism. <laughs> oh my God. Won't happen. God is going to overturn the tables, going to turn it around, and we're going to come out on top. Remember, we're the head, not the tail. And when you look at the millennium, it's all blessings. Uh, turning your weapons into, into instruments of farming to bless, to increase, to get us out of debt under the previous regimes and nations. Everyone's in debt except those who are pulling the strings, these big, huge corporations. They will be out of debt. The debt's been paid. Jesus paid the price of everything. All sin. Sin problems done away with in the new covenant, not in the old. Anyway, I'm going to close with that because I don't want to just go over the same things I said. This is recorded, so it'll come out. And also that message I spoke last week, I had a hard time actually getting it ready for you, but that'll come out next week too. So you can hear that one again. Uh, I'm, I'm for what God is doing in the earth. And believe me, it looks like it's horrendous, but it's transitional. Maybe for another, I don't know, five years, it'll be all horrible. But we're coming through that. So hold on. Cast not away your confidence, which is great recompense of reward. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And right now, receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Did the Holy Spirit, Paul, say, come to you by keeping law? No. It came to you by hearing of faith. So don't go back under the law. Keep in faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. I'm giving you the word of God now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm an ambassador of the new covenant. 
Don't touch the old, it's past. It's no longer there, it can't help you. It can only bring you into condemnation because you can't keep the law. No one can. It's been kept by Jesus Christ. Him only has paid the price, the penalty for sin. And of course, all have sinned. That means we've all broken law. And that blood, that blood, Jesus' blood is the only one that can wash away your sin nature. Your new creation. All things pass away. Behold, new things have come. With that, I'm going to say stay free, stay blessed, and let somebody know about Victory Alive Church on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. Next week, Ash Katecha will be taking the service. I will not be here. And uh, come along. And if you have a, a need of healing, come along. Join. Because God can reach you even on Zoom. There's nowhere where God is hindered. If there's faith in the room, God will move. God bless you. Appreciate you. And until next time, amen and amen. I'm stopping the live stream now. You can unmute now, my friends. Another perfect message, Pastor Michael. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Here's the only perfect dog in the world for you to see. I may have to dis slightly disagree with you on that one. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but look how handsome he is. Look at that. Yeah, he's so handsome. <laughs> you have a dog, Paulina? I've been wrecked. Okay, let's see the dogs now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another doggy. Look. <laughs> see the doggy? You see the doggy there? <laughs> oh, I love me. Oh, I love the dog. He's loving me. He's loving me. Oh, yeah. Look at the oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Here he is. Anyway, God loves little pets. Little he does. Anyway. And, uh, huh? He loves these little dogs. I am. They're so lovely. I'm so happy to have him with me. Anyway, your time's up. Benny, Benny from heaven, off you go. <laughs> How are you all doing? Oh, I'm Jan's around. around. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to change the view. Yeah, next week we're um, physically in church, so I'm, I'm not make it back. You're physically in church now? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, no, as from next week, we're physically in church. Okay. Are you going to be able to sing in church? I think the, the rules, well, not in church, but no, can't outside. No, but we, we dance and clap and, you know, just right. now, now a bit behind your mask. Ah. You know. <laughs> do you have to wear a mask? You do have to wear a mask, yeah. You don't? Yeah, you do. You do, okay. Yeah. I'll be socially distanced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, it, it works okay, actually. You know, we, you have to book it. It's obviously, you've got a seat. Um, and you're not supposed to move about or anything once you're in your seat. You're supposed to stay there. So we would volunteer to help register people when they come in and tell them where they're sitting, because that way we get to chat to everybody. Ah. Oh. Yeah, see, I'm not in my madness. Um, so yeah. does, the, does the music band sing? Yeah. They no, sing. No. When you're on the platform, you don't have to wear a mask. Oh, okay. But when you've got the microphone, you don't have to wear a mask. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only in the congregation, you have to wear a mask. Right. So if you get up to speak, you take your mask off when you get up. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, we, have, we always have the light band, and they just stand across the platform, of course. Um, and yeah. So it's it's good at least having live worship, people dance around and you know so that's pretty good. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean our, yeah. our online services are great. They're they're really excellently produced and they're live. They do them live from the building, so they're streamed. They're not um, they're not recorded. The worship's recorded, but the <laughs> people are actually live in the building. Um, so we're going back to that next week. We've got. 
for Easter, we're doing a, a joint service. Then after that, we're going to our communities. And our community, we have four communities in our location. And our community meets at nine. So I, I should be back uh, by half 11 anyway. Mm. Yeah. Sounds fun. Sounds yeah. fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> because see, yeah. you can't hug them yet, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bit I miss, hugging people and just, you know. That, that's the yeah. yeah yeah actually physically getting together with people not to mention cruising well we can give we can give virtual hugs now. here are helen here comes a big hug yeah virtual hugs <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be virtual hugs <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yes. yes i miss those hugs yeah <laughs> what a world what a world what a world yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. God's got it. So I want to say hello to, hello to Madupi. Hi, Madupi. How are you? I see her there. Oh. Um. All right. Uh, anyone would like to add something or? Subtract or subtract. <laughs> oh. oh, I suppose it's just another perfect message like um <laughs> <All you just laughs> <laughs> no. No, it's 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 good to be alive, let me tell you. God. That's it. We're all very quiet today. We should maybe talk about the vaccine. Don't get everybody yapping. <laughs> Bye, Maria. <laughs> yeah, we've got our Hello. jab. We're Hi, booked for, we're booked for next, next, next week. Yeah, Good Friday we're booked. Yeah. yeah. Good. So. We, we're going to the cross next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's all up? you resurrect on Sunday? Yeah. 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 That's what I'm believing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So pray for us. Yeah, I think it'll be a relief, though. Really, yeah. it'll be a relief. Of course, it'll, you, you, yeah. you have a sense of happiness because you did it yeah. by faith anyway. You, you're living yeah, by exactly. faith. Yeah, yeah. It's all by yeah. faith today. There's not a faith that's sin. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I'd rather, you know, the the whole thing uh, today. I said, well, not there. Yesterday, I was walking with God, and suddenly I realized it's all about giants when you think about it. Uh, Israel had to face uh, Goliath, mm. and then there was one little guy with five smooth stones called David. He came up and took out the enemy. Before you can go into your blessing, you're always going to see a giant. Then you're in the promised land. They're all going to all ready to go in, but there's giants in the land. There's always going to be something stopping you mm. from possessing your possession. Giants, yeah. but God's bigger than the giant. Let me tell you, God's bigger than the vaccine. And his, he, 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 he made the DNA. <laughs> He's in you. The one that created you is in you. So um, go in faith and, uh, and then get a sense of happiness. You know, you're not, you know, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Let me tell you, they will not. And um, we're, we're, we're in a season, I believe, of. God's reset, God's global reset, not man's. Man mm -hmm. wants to put us all in fear and slavery, but that's not going to happen. So, um, good times. Let the good times roll. That's what I say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you planning to go on a cruise this year? Oh, no, no, we were. We just had two cancelled in May, but it, we might do like a little two night around the UK oh. um, at the end of May. I, I know, good, I know a good cruise ship for you. It's it's by the Suez Canal. It's waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's there's definitely room on board. <laughs> oh, the one well, that I don't. It's, they they're doing all these cruises around the UK now. Um, but I don't care. I don't have to get off, do I? You know, 
No. I, I just want to be on board ship. I don't care where it goes. I just want to, I just want to well, it's, it's called addiction, Jan. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You should become a sailor. Become a sailor. <laughs> Join the navy. No, I, I know Jan should should buy a cabin on one of these huge world liners. I did think about it. And then she it. just stays in that, and that's no. a. Because no, I like going on different ships. I I thought about it, but I thought, no, you know what? I'd rather just go on different ships. Yeah, buy a cabin. It's yours. It's home. You can stay there. Some honest. people, you know what? Cabin, there are people, and Jan will attest to this, that have, they never get off the boat. They're on one of these huge lines that wow. go around the world. And it's cheaper for them to be on the boat wow. than living at home because they got God, free medical, so they got free food, they got free everything. Living in a care home. Right? Yeah. There's one American lady. She lives on princess cruises. She said, um, rather, if I was going to go into a residential home, it would cost me less, more than spending a time on a ship. Because she's on um, yeah. all the time. She gets a great deal. She said, my laundry's done. My room's taken care of. Here we go. Oh, See, yeah. you've got so a beautiful view you. in the morning. In the well, got, yeah. You're in an old age home. So promise yeah. me, Jan, you won't put me in an old age home. You're... You'll make sure I'm on one of those uh, cruise liners yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah. If, Sounds you know, if, if that was my choice, if I was alone and, uh, and my choice was to go into a home or live on a ship, I'd live on a ship anyway. Oh, I'd live on a ship too, without yeah. a doubt. Beautiful. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, um, I just like the whole experience of the ship. And so, and also, my cruise queen channel is dormant at the moment. I've got to get back on board ship to get some more flipping videos done. Of course, of course. She's the cru cruise queen. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. Maybe one day we'll all go on a cruise, Jan. Yeah, go on a, a, a Facebook <laughs> cruise. A Facebook cruise. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We, were, we had it all booked for Jenny Star, like the company. We've been on a company cruise. We just had, we had like 300 people. Um, all went on a cruise and the the one that got cancelled we had over 600 people booked in mm. wow just a five night cruise you know but it's more expensive to do a five night cruise than a seven night cruise yeah so, well, when we get up to 600 can, people we'll think yeah. about <laughs> you can do like two nights out of Southampton just for the experience of a cruise it's yeah. very cheap a couple of hundred quid praise the lord yeah. Okay, is um, everybody happy or I'm happy. questions? I'm happy. Anyone? I'm happy. Be happy. Uh, I guess just remember to donate. Oh, yes. I always forget that. Already done. But thank God I do have, uh, I do have my helpers. So right, I want to thank you that. that you who do give, and I think that's all of you. I thank you for your support um, because we are a church and uh, if you need to know where to give, it's, uh, you can do it straight on the website, of course. Uh, and of course, I put down here the links and um, it helps, yeah, it definitely helps. And I do appreciate it and so does Denise for any help in that area. Other than that, um, I will say goodbye. Unless you want to say something to me <laughs> or ask me something. No, you're happy, good. Uh, I said, say, well, pass the mic, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Yeah, okay, Pauline. That's okay. Good. I left a message. I did leave a message. Yeah, I, I got it, Jim. Okay. Uh, and um, everyone, and um, Helen, I will see you next week. Looking forward Bye. to it. Bye. 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 Love to see you again. Yeah, Bye. 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 Bye.